the best part about writing music, uh, I'd have to say, is hearing it performed. There's nothing like being able to sit in the audience and hear somebody playing your music and think, man, I created that and that, that I, I put that up there. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, sometimes there's bad performances, but uh, the best part about it is hearing the final project and knowing that all your time and all your hard work went into creating that art. Starting a piece is the hardest part. It's uh, where do I begin? It's like jumping into a big vat of ice water. You know, I mean, it's it's tough at first, but once you get rolling, things are things get going well, and things usually roll along. Well, it's always Mark for straight because well, without him, my music goes unplayed. He has always been the creative side of things, where I've been the technical side. He would basically come up with an idea, and then he would come to me and say, Mark, here's my idea. Is this something that we can do? I would look at it, and I would think, man, <laughs> it's going to be tough, but I think we can pull it off. One of my biggest beliefs is that you have to give the audience something beyond the music to enjoy when they are at a concert. They either need something visual or something that's more than just the hearing. We did spend a lot of time working on the video. Uh, what we did was we took a bunch of videos from the History Channel and then we imported them to the computer and basically sat there and watched through them all, like picking out all the best scenes that we liked the most. I went with a half electric ensemble and a half acoustic ensemble. You got the piano, which is played with mallets on the inside and then on the keys normally. You have an electric violin with delay and phaser on it, uh, bass drum, snare drum, and cymbals, and then my Roland Phantom keyboard, which has a sampler and it's uh, organ sound on that one. So it's half electric, half acoustic, pretty unorthodox uh, ways of playing the instruments and uses of them, but. Uh, I thought it would be the perfect mix for the piece. It's not easy to play. It might look like it's, you know, a simple instrument, but there's a lot more to it than what you think you see. I mean, if you could just imagine 
me sitting there on the stage, hunched over this little piano on this little miniature bench with a little miniature music stand. Music sitting in there. You can imagine it must be pretty funny. You can't write for it until you actually touch the instrument and do some stuff with it. You, you gotta see what the instrument's capabilities are, its limitations, before you can actually assess what you can do with it. If you've ever gotten the chance to sit in the audience or had the chance to sit in the audience and listen to a minimalist piece, the anticipation and the unfolding of the piece is so intense. You're sitting there and you're just waiting for the next voice to add or the next thing to change and it's really kind of suspenseful and I was really wanted to try to capture that. And I've always wanted to write for two pianos because I've always wanted to see them in the center of the stage interlocked. I just think that makes a cool visual. I originally had written that piece for marimba, electric guitar, electric bass, piano, and baritone saxophone. As it got closer to my recital, we couldn't get the ensemble together. So it was basically out of necessity that that piece became a two piano piece. Thank you. 